here at Hackberry Farm, we're always doing planning for our next project. And after a couple of days of rain and things are really too wet to do anything in the field, I'm actually looking at what the project later on this winter and early spring is going to be. And so to start that out, we're going to try to figure out what the fall of our land is. And so in thinking about a few projects and trying to decide what we want to do with the property, one of the things I've decided I want to do is try to get a little bit better drainage out of this field. Now this field out in front of the house looks relatively flat. It's about five acres, but it does have some fall to it. On the north end of this field is a wetland that, that's habitat to ducks and wading birds and all kinds of other stuff. And I'd like for some of this rain to fall to be able to drain a little bit better into the wetland so it catches more water. In addition, we've got a pond right by the house that on dry years like this year, where we're not getting a lot of rain, we can actually pump water out of the pond into the ditch and the ditch flows down there. But before I start digging a ditch, I wanna make sure that our land has the correct amount of fall to it and a simple way to do that is using one of these tools like we're using today and the tool I'll be using today is a laser level now some people call them transit it's not a true transit but essentially it's a laser plane and what it does is when you get it level and the, and the mechanism inside spins, it shoots a horizontal laser out over the landscape. We can't see it, but the laser's there. And what allows us to do is set our point that we're trying to survey against and determine whether everything we survey beyond that point is higher or lower than our original point. One of the first steps we need to do when determining the fall of the property is to set up the laser plane on the tripod. Now, one of the things you gotta be aware of is this thing has to set perfectly level, so that way when it shines the laser out, that laser will be perfectly level. That takes a little bit of doing. You've gotta work at it to get it set up level, but it does have a bubble level on top, and it aids a lot in setting this, th this first piece of equipment up. The next thing I'll do is really take my first reading. Now, usually for me and the way my brain works, I like to start at the high ground and work down from that. It's just easier for me to visualize because again, some of this is a little bit counterintuitive, but once you get the hang of it in your mind, it's really pretty easy after that. And so I've, I want to try to find out where the water's running from this pipe, this drainage pipe we have that drains the rest of the yard, where it runs from this pipe, and then which way is downhill from here. I've set this up already, but what I did was found the point right below the pipe where the water first runs out as my reference point. And then you can hear, as I set the stick in place, we get a fast beeping tone. Now, you can hear it there, it goes to a steady tone. That means at a steady tone, it's dead level to the transit with the laser shooting out. Now, this thing is really sensitive. I think this is about a 10th of an inch sensitive. So if you move it just a little bit, you get a tone. But as long as I hear that tone, I'm, I know I'm within the ballpark. And so once you get that first reference point set, you know where your your high ground is and it's easier to work backwards from there from there i just need to determine where the fall of my land is now you may be wondering where can i get a piece of equipment like this they can be a little pricey to buy i think the cheap ones, cheapest ones you can find are five to six hundred dollars you can rent them at a lot of home improvement stores mine i borrowed from a friend who's a dozer operator down the road if you notice at my first point, the receiver's not beeping at all, and that's because I'm running downhill from my original reference point. Now, if I raise this receiver up, you can hear it starting to beep. Now, that's where it gets counterintuitive. I've got to go up, and because I'm going up, that means that the stick's going up, and that tells me if I've got space below the stick, that it's downhill from my original reference point. If I can't get a tone at all, that means it's uphill and I need to move this receiver down the stick a little bit. But that's why I like starting on the high ground is because it's easier for me just to visualize if I raise the stick up and I get a tone, I know if there's space below my stick that it's downhill from where I originally started. So when I raise the stick up and I get a tone, I can look below my stick and I can see that I've got about six inches of clearance there below the stick so that tells me there's six inches of drop from where i first started up at my up at my reference point to this point right now now from here what i can do once i get a tone is i can walk back and forth and i can see the ground getting closer to my stick and what that means is the ground's going uphill so it's getting a little bit closer to since it's getting closer to the stick and so if i go back this other way again I can follow the stick and it's getting closer to the ground right now so it's going uphill so there's an arc right here that I know just by my quick visualization of it there's an arc right through here that I know that it goes uphill on both sides 
and so you can go through and you can move this this uh receiver up and down on each point and get exact measurements in fact for big construction projects that's what they do they'll use more sophisticated devices than this where they can take an actual elevation point on each point they do to find where the bottom of the of the the low spot is going to be but in this case i'm just going to eyeball it as i walk through here and find my low spot and once i find a low spot i'll stick a flag in the ground so once I put my stake in the ground, that's my first reference point because that's what I believe is a low spot here through the field. Now, I don't have to be at the exact lowest spot in this one point. All I need to know is kind of the general low area because once I dig the ditch through here, then that'll, that'll make it even lower than that and the water will drain precisely. You think about this like a geometry grid, even though on my x-axis, my left to right, that runs perpendicular to where the, uh, where the instrument is, even though the, the uh, x-axis is relatively flat, the y-axis, we're still running downhill. And so I know that because again, I can raise the stick up and I can gauge how much space is underneath the stick. And I know it's still, it's running a little bit downhill. It's not a whole lot, but it's running a little bit. But as long as I find kind of a general low area and can put another flag here when I dig my ditch and I can, and I, it'll still, water will still run in the direction i want it to run as long as i'm not we're not running uphill from here everything's okay as long as we're running downhill from the first reference point we know we can make the water go where we want it to go even though the ground is relatively flat through here that's actually going to work in my favor because i can make a meandering ditch that runs through here that will really slow the water down the thing i don't want to do is make a straight ditch to from point a to point b because the faster that water gets moving through the more erosion it's going to cause Eventually, I'll take this ditch and I'll plant some native grasses alongside of it. I'll plant some trees along and try to make it look as uh, natural as I can. But one thing I wanted to do is kind of snake through this field and move really slowly from point A to point B. I don't care if it backs up a little bit. It's eventually going to flood this anyway. But by using the, the topography of the ground to my advantage, uh, I can make this water go as slow as I need it to go. So I'm almost to the end of the flagging operation across this field and look what I found out. Look how much I've got to raise this. You can hear the tone there. And as I look at it, and it's amazing because when you look at this, this field, just with your naked eye, it looks almost flat. But from my reference point to where I stand right now, it's probably a hundred yards away. And then the amount of fall that the land does between here and there is about a foot and a half to two feet. I can measure it precisely, but it does the precise measurements again doesn't matter th so much through here to me. All I want to know is is the water going to run downhill when I put it in the ditch up there all the way to down here and so far it is. I mean it's just all I've got to do is even though I've got a relatively flat area up there, as long as I can dig the ditch and the ditch is lower than the rest of the surrounding uh, landscape around it and as long as from a, a, a Y standpoint that the ground pitches from the high ground on the south to the low ground on the north I know the water is going to run the direction I want it to. So with these laser levels I've introduced you a pretty basic way of using one that's how I use it most of the time is just trying to figure out what the ground is doing. You can get a lot more precise than what I've showed you today but for my usage I really don't need to be that precise. All I need to know is where the high ground is, where the, where the ground falls to from there and get a general sense of the topography of my property and by using one in this, this way today I've got a pretty good sense that once I dig this ditch I can make the water go where I need it to go and that's to this wetland to keep this wetland land pool.